Okay, either you decided that you didn't want to have to deal with game engines anymore, or you're just curious about how to make a project in something that's not a game engine. Um, and you researched a bit and found that SDL was a pretty good uh, library for C++ to make visual projects in. Um, you searched up some tutorials, but they all used things like VS Visual Studio or, you know, kind of proprietary text editing software that you don't really like to use. I personally really dislike using Visual Studio. Um, I prefer v VS Code um, because I feel it's more bare bones or whatever. Um, so here's a tutorial for setting up SDL so you can use it in Visual Studio or VS Code or, you know, really any text editor that you want. You can use it in Vim or, you know, really Notepad. Um, so first off, we'll search SDL to download. We'll go just to the first thing, and then this is the SDL, to, SDL website. Um, we'll go to SDL releases. This brings us to a GitHub page, and we just want, you know, obviously the newest release. We want this SDL2 devel uh, mingw.zip. Uh, this stands for SDL2 Developer, and we're using MinGW to compile our code. Um, so we obviously want this MinGW. Okay, once you downloaded that file, you'll get the zip file, and we'll just extract it. <laughs> okay, once extracted, we'll have all these folders and files and stuff. The only things that we really care about are this i868 i686 folder and this x86 64 folder. These are the different versions of the MinGW code that we can use. Um, you know, this might work for your computer, or this might work for your computer. Personally, this one works for my computer, the i686. So I'll use this. In this, we have a bunch of different files. Uh, we have bin, include, lib, and share. We care about bin, include, and lib. We don't care about share at all. This just, you know, we don't care about anything in there. In the include, we have this SDL2 file. What I like to do is just move everything into the include. I don't like having this extra file in here. Uh, you can keep it, but I just don't like it. So we'll delete that. Okay, so we care about this include, this lib, all of this and just this folder in the bin, sdl2dll. Okay. So we'll open our project folder. Um, there we go. Open our project folder. And then drag all the folders and files into, uh, no. And then create a new folder. We'll call it source. In here, we'll drag everything we want. So we'll drag the entire include folder, the entire lib folder, and then outside of the source file, in your main file, we want to drag the SEL2 DLL from the bin folder, like that. Okay, we'll open this folder in our text editor. Okay, so you can see we have all of our folders in this all of our files and folders in this project folder. We'll just make a new file, call it make file. This is for MinGW to look at uh, when compiling the code. So we'll just write some compilation arguments. Write G++ to compile C++ code. Dash capital I for our include path. So we'll do source slash include. Dash capital L for a lib path. Uh, these paths right here. So, uh, source, slash, source slash lib. And I'm going to output to a main.exe file from our main.c++ file. This main.c++ means that it'll only compile if we have a folder called main.c++, or it'll only compile full files that are named main.c++, right? If your file is named something else, you need to change this file name in the make file to, you know, whatever, file name, but we'll use main. 
Okay, now for the linking settings. So the linking settings is dash lowercase l sdl2 main, like this, and then dash lowercase l sdl2. And that's all we need in our make file. Okay, now we'll make our main.c++ file, like this. We'll hashtag include sdl.h. Uh, if it autocompletes, then that's a really good sign that you did something right in your make file. And then we'll make our int main function. Now, if you try to compile it like this, sdl will complain that sdl main is undefined. You can fix this by putting the you know, generic um, arguments in the main function, so like uh, arg, uh, car, args, and you know, whatever. Uh, I don't like doing that, so if you don't want to do that, you can in front or on top of your include uh, define sdl underscore, sdl underscore main underscore handled. So this just gets rid of that error and lets you compile our code correctly. So let's test that our code's compiling correctly. So we'll type in min gw capital gw 32 dash make and we don't get any errors. So that's perfect. Okay. So in our main function, before we do anything, we're going to sdl underscore init. So we're initializing sdl. We want to initialize everything. So we'll do sdl underscore init underscore everything like that. We then want to create a window. So we'll do sdl underscore window and it needs to be a pointer. So we'll make a pointer called window and then that equals sdl underscore create window with a title. So we'll just call it hello window like that. Our the position on our screen that it shows up on. So I want it to show up in the center. So I'll just write sdl underscore window pause centered for x and y underscore window pause centered. And then we want our width and our height of our window. I'll just do 400 by 400 pixels. Finally, flags. You can keep this as zero. Um, you can research what flags do with yourself. I don't really know all of them, um, but anyways. Uh, next, we want to make an SDL underscore render. So this is what will draw stuff to the screen. We want a pointer. We'll call it render. That equals SDL underscore create render. And then just pass in our window. Our index will just do zero. Our no flags will be zero. OK. We also need an SDL underscore event. We'll, not a pointer, we'll just call it event. This will let us put, you know, window events like closing the window or, you know, anything else. Okay, and then last thing, we'll make a bool, we'll call it quit, and we'll, get, we'll set it equal to false. We'll make our main loop, so while not quit, um, put every rendering thing in here. Um, for now, we'll just clear the background to black. So to do that, we write SDL underscore set render draw color. So this just sets the color that every other, you know, drawing event after it will use. We'll pass in our render pointer and our RGB values. So for black, 0, 0, 0, 255. Okay, to clear the background, we do sdl underscore render clear. So this just draws a color over the whole background and just pass in our renderer. Okay, at the end, you want to write sdl underscore render present render renderer. So this, this is a function that renders everything. And then outside the while loop, we want to put sdl underscore destroy window. Pass our window write sdl underscore destroy 
renderer, put on our renderer, and sdl underscore quit. So this just, you know, prevents memory leaks or whatever by destroying everything we're not using anymore, and then quits. Okay, if you run this, it'll work. So let's compile it and run it by typing dot slash main dot exe. We have our window, but it's not responding. You can see I'm clicking, window's not responding, we'll close. That's because we haven't added the event to actually know when we want to close a window. So we have to write if sdl underscore poll event and then pass in the pointer to our event. So and event does not equal zero. So this is just saying if we have an event, we'll put that event inside the event variable. And this just checks whether event actually happens because we don't want to run this code if event isn't happening. Okay. Um, or I guess you can leave this blank, but whatever. And then inside this if loop, or if statement, we'll type if event dot type. So this is checking the type of the event equals SDL underscore quit in all caps. So this is just comparing the event type to a default event type called quit. And then if that happens, we just want to set our quit boolean to true. This will then break our while loop equals this will break our while loop and then let us you know close our window so let's compile this run it and we can see our window is responding we can close it it's perfect um, so that's the basics of setting up a window in sdl uh, we have all our files our make file we made a window and we can you know change the background color of it so let's change it to white real quick, make it, do it, now it's white. So we set up a window, we clear the background, and we can close it. Perfect.